So I eventually quit Solomon Brothers. I was living in London at the time. I moved to Moscow and I set up an investment fund called the Hermitage Fund. I raised $25 million from a famous investor at the time named Edmund Safra. And I started investing the money in all of these newly uh, privatized companies in Russia. And it was the most spectacular rise of an investment fund in the history of investment funds. Uh, in the first 18 months of my fund's operation, the fund went up 865%. I went from $25, $25 million to more than a billion dollars of assets under management as we had appreciation and people added money to the fund. I was the best performing fund manager in the world in 1997. I was being featured in New York Times, Financial Times, Wall Street Journal, and some type of new financial genius. My, my clients were sending their private jets to Moscow to pick me up to entertain me in the south of France on their yachts to toast our joint success. And I was all of 31 years old. Now, all, this, all these great things that I was accomplishing would have been all great by themselves. But if you put them all together, and then you put them all together, in the hands of a 31 year old, that's the biggest sell signal there ever was. But of course I was 31 years old and I didn't see that. So I thought my billion dollars was gonna turn into 10 and it was all gonna be great for everybody. But as some of you, maybe many of you will remember, 1998 was not a good year for Russia. 1998 was the year that the Russian government defaulted on their bonds, devalued the ruble by 75%, and my billion dollars of assets went down 90%. I lost $900 million of my clients' money. I went from being the face of the rise of the Russian stock market to the face of the collapse. 